Welcome back to the SES Emperor of Democracy, cadets. Today, we're dropping in on Penta to deal with some command bunkers the bots have set up. These giant wastes of space contain plenty of stolen precious metals, so we're going to scrap them to help with the major order. To do this, we're going to be relying on the LAS-98 laser cannon, supported by stun grenades. This underrated support platform can kill anything the bots have to offer, and its only real weakness is that it can't destroy fabricators. It takes out hulks, tanks, towers, and even factory striders in just a few seconds, while also serving as an effective chaff-clearing tool. Combined with stun grenades, it becomes one of the more lethal support options against the bots. If you like the autocannon or the anti-material rifle, you'll enjoy melting bots down with the LAS-98. To supplement our LAS cannon, we're bringing the JAR-5 Dominator, a staple weapon amongst bot players. With medium armor pin and a heap of stagger, the JAR-5 is going to help a lot with the hordes of devastators we're going to need to mow down. We're also bringing the grenade pistol to shore up our weakness against fabricators and help out a little bit with scout striders. For support, we're bringing Eagle 1, loaded up with high explosives. She's going to be our primary means of destroying patrols and dealing with fabricators. There's a reason she's democracy's most lethal lady, and you'll see exactly why today. We're also bringing the Precision Orbital Strike to help with heavier targets like tanks and factory striders. Finally, we're bringing the Big Guns, 380mm Barrage. This is the best stratagem in the game at dealing with command bunkers. And if the bots weren't already stupid enough, we're going to be dragging down their collective IQ a little bit more by taking out their command and control centers with 380mm of freedom. Lastly, we're gearing up again in the FS-34 Exterminator armor for that explosive resistance. Now that you've seen the loadout, let's drop into combat. The main lesson we're going to be looking at today is going to be route planning and how this interacts with avoiding the new patrol spawn rate because it is pretty horrendous. There are a lot of patrols in the game right now. And we're also going to be talking about how our loadout interacts with what we're doing. So first off, this is the route I'm going to be using today. As you can see, it's a little bit of a figure eight routine because when I looked at the map, I noticed that if I went south and then circled back up, I'd be able to circle the whole map and hit every objective and have a really good shot at hitting all the side objectives as well. And having this route in mind is going to help me a lot when it comes to avoiding patrols. Because if I know exactly where I want to go next and I see a patrol that I don't want to engage, then it's pretty easy for me to just kind of skirt around the outside of the patrol or throw an eagle at it with a stun grenade. There's a lot of different options I have to deal with big threats when I know where the fuck I'm going. So when you all drop into your own games, I want you to try looking at your map and kind of getting a general idea of where you want to go and more importantly, stick into that idea. I know it's easy to panic in this game when, you know, lasers and rockets are flying right over your head, but we're hell divers. We don't panic, we scrap bots and spill oil. So that's what we're gonna do. This leads nicely into my next point, synergy in your loadout. Knowing what you're running and why you're running it is always important when you're playing Helldivers 2. So as you can see here, I was able to throw an Eagle Airstrike right beneath that bot drop before the bots finally dropped to the ground. And I followed it up with a stun grenade, and that allowed me enough time to laser beam this cannon even though I had to step out in the open. And I can use my laser cannon to just kind of finish off any stragglers or if, you know, there's devastators or whatever, I'll use my dominator. But this just synergy with my kit, the stun grenades, the eagle airstrike, and the laser cannon, it just works beautifully, y'all. And this is true for a lot of different loadouts. Every loadout I've showed you on my channel so far has been made with this mentality. I want my weapons to work in concert with one another rather than as an individual piece of equipment. That said, I'm not. this is not the only way you can run the laser cannon. Not by far, but... I would recommend that you bring some kind of a weapon that can deal, a primary weapon that can deal with devastators. Because my laser cannon is going to be dealing, it's such a good generalist weapon, it deals with the little guys just fine. It can kill devastators, hulks, factory striders, gunships, just anything the bots have, the laser cannon can kill it. But it comes to the downside of it takes it a little while to get its damage across. So I need a weapon that comes with some stagger. I need some, some heft in my loadout, which is why I brought the Jar 5 Dominator. But you could also bring the Punisher Plasma, the Slugger, just anything that's got some stagger to it should work really well because we just need to be able to buy time to deal with Devastators as they pop up while the Laser Cannon does, it work, does its work. 
As you can see here, one quick stun grenade in a few seconds on the eyeball, and we gave that Hulk a good dose of freedom-based LASIK surgery, and he fell over dead. Ever since I discovered it, I've been real excited to bring y'all a run with the laser cannon, because if you like the auto cannon or the anti-material rifle, this is a really good option to bring as well. It doesn't deal with fabricators, but it can literally kill anything in the game that the bots bring. You can kill factory striders with it, hulks just get absolutely destroyed. You'll see at one point here in the run, I'm able to kill four hulks in under a minute because of the laser cannon. I do not think I could do the same thing with the anti-material rifle or the auto cannon, mostly because if you're bad at aiming, y'all, this weapon is a godsend. Democracy herself gave gifted this thing to you to deal with your bad aim, because the laser cannon, it is a laser. It is a laser beam. Sometimes we describe assault rifles as being laser beam like, well this is a literal laser beam of death and it works just as advertised. So all you gotta do is just keep that sucker trained on whatever weak spot of whatever enemy is it causing you problems and it will melt their face right off. For the cherry on top, this weapon system does not use ammo, instead it relies on a heat sink. It comes with one spare heat sink and uh, honestly y'all, I think I've maybe reloaded it twice in my like three or four runs with this weapon. It just, it doesn't really run into heat problems that often. You can keep it trained for a very long time. And as you can see, it goes down as soon as you stop using it. So if I need to reposition behind some cover, or I need to pull out the grenade pistol to deal with something real quick, the heat sink's gonna be dropping down that whole time. So it's basically unlimited ammo, which is a major benefit it has over other support options. If you're liking what you see with the laser cannon so far, then consider liking this video and drop me a subscription if you feel so inclined. I do try to bring y'all as entertaining and educational content as possible. I really want the Helldivers community to see that no matter the challenge, we can overcome it with proper planning and understanding how our weapons work. There's a ton of good options in this game for taking out the enemies of democracy, and I'm determined to bring y'all each one. So let's keep it going. We want to keep our momentum going, and we want to make sure we're topped off on everything, and we have control over the situation, which we get by dealing with the enemies and avoiding the ones we don't want to fight. But now that we've killed everything, we're going to move on to the next primary objective, and this is why we brought the 380mm barrage. I don't bring this stratagem a lot, but whenever I run into these command centers, I bring them every time, because it just kills them in one go. I don't think I've ever had it fail to destroy a command center. I think it's just because the explosion radius on it is so large, and it goes on for like 35 seconds or something, that it just, they don't stand a chance, y'all. This is kind of like stepping on an aluminum can with my boot. And as I was talking about with the loadout synergy, I didn't think there was any other stratagem that would be able to deal with this particular hard target. And the cooldown is such that I should have it up every time I go up against the command bunker. But because it's got such a big range and it lasts for so long, I can pretty safely just pick off these little bots with the laser cannon. Which by the way, I hadn't mentioned this yet, but it does not make a whole lot of noise. It's, it's not as quiet as something like the diligence, but it's still pretty good at not making too much noise. But since I let the 380 handle that big command bunker, we can move on to the next objective. I see this artillery position to my left, but I really want to go take out this fabricator first, uh, just because I want to have enough space. I want to have somewhere I can run away to if a bunch of patrols and drops happen while I'm loading up the artillery system. So we just go chunk an eagle at it. I'm going to wait here, wait till eagle one lands off, see if she hits it right. Uh, she doesn't quite finish off the entire fab or the mortar pit here, so I'm going to have to deal with it with the laser cannon. Another great analogy between it and the AMR, it can destroy these pretty easily. You don't need to hit them in the weak spot. Just hit them anywhere and they'll blow up after a few, after a few seconds. Just make sure that you check these places for samples because there's usually quite a few scattered around in these little side objectives or in bot fabricators. So when I'm looking for samples, you'll see me go after them pretty often. With the mortar pit dead, it's time to establish our own fire superiority. But first, there's this random ass tank that just shows up out of nowhere, so I'm going to introduce it to the laser cannon. And I think it hit it a little bit too hard because the turret just disappeared. I was a little confused by that. I was expecting it to blow up and I'd have to stem or something. But no, nah, it did me the kindness of just quietly keeling over before I needed to waste a stem on it. Last time I mentioned that there was a way to yeet these projectiles like a longshoreman, and thanks to a kind commenter in my comments section, I did figure out how to do it. So the way you do it is you pick up the bomb a couple of times, and then you're going to pull out your primary and look up as you do it. 
This just launches the shell forward and drastically reduces the amount of time you need to be doing manual labor, and instead you can devote that time to putting holes in bots. Now this trick does take a little bit of practice. The way I got it down was I went into a difficulty 4 mission and just looked for artillery until I found one. And as soon as I did, I just practiced until I got it, uh, so I can do it reliably. So if you want to be able to use this trick, I'd recommend you do the same. Or, you know, if you got some buddies or whatever, you can just do it in your regular games. But I do think it is a nice little trick that I really hope that Arrowhead does not patch out. Uh, even if they do, we do have other ways to move them. But it is kind of cool that you can just throw these things and get this objective done a little bit faster. And as a solo, as I've said plenty of times, it's really important to be managing that clock. So being able to use these little tricks to save a little bit of time helps a lot with being able to complete the run while you're solo, especially with all the new enemies and patrols and all that garbage. Now here I do want to talk about the current situation. So we had a patrol come in, I killed it with an eagle airstrike, but another patrol has made its way in with a bot drop. There's also a tower off in the distance that's going to be causing me a lot of issues, and this is going to take me a little bit of time to clean up. Clean up. I know I just talked about saving the clock as much as you can, but sometimes these situations are unavoidable if you want to get an outstanding patriotism as a solo. If you're not trying to do that, then it's way easier. You just don't bother with these side objectives. You can just kind of go through the primary, but that's not what I do, y'all. I make sure that y'all know it doesn't matter how hard they make the game. I will be able to clear the entire map so that y'all can learn from my mistakes and hopefully help you get a little bit better at the game. I also do it just because fuck the bots. They deserve it. They do not need to be on our planets ruining our democracy and our way of life. So if putting up an artillery position is going to help me with that goal, then I'm going to do it. Now that we've cleared out a good bit of the enemies, I'm going to start thinking about grabbing that last shell. I still got to load one more in, but I see that tank and I realize that that tower shot was coming at me. So that tower has been aggroed. But I'm able to yeet the shell into the pit and then use the trick I mentioned in the last video to get it pretty close before I get blasted by that frickin' tower. Now, I, I realize in my past videos I've talked a lot about how much I hate towers, but this is a really good example of why. They're just really disruptive and they're always messing me up when I'm trying to do something important. But that eagle airstrike is going to give us a little bit of space to load this shell up finally unless that fucking tower shoots me again. But no, we get it into the breach and we go tumbling a little bit. So now I'm kind of pissed and I'm going to go on the attack. I'm tired of getting shot. That uh, console is directly in the line of fire of that tower. So we got to run up and take it out personally. This means we're going to have to chew through all these enemies. Got a bunch of scout striders coming up. But this is a perfect example of when the grenade pistol is going to be useful offensively. I could have killed those with a laser cannon, but it would have taken a lot longer to do. And I don't have impact grenades, but I do have eight shots with my grenade pistol. And since they're clumped up, it's really good at dealing with them. Now this tank is a bit close, and that tower's making it a little bit hard for me to actually get a good shot in. So I'm going to circle around the whole artillery emplacement and attack it from a different angle. Now that we've resupplied and repositioned, we're going on the attack. I see there's a big patrol off to my right. But I don't think that it's aggroed on me right now. So I'm going to sneak off to the left. I'm not going to engage the patrol. But I am going to kill anything that is in my way. This rocket devastator is a good example. He might have messed me up on my way to the tower. So I'm going to kill him. But now I've got this hard cover between me and the box. And what I mean by hard cover is it doesn't matter what shoots this rock. It's never going to be destroyed. So even if there's a tower or a tank or something shooting at me, I can just duck my head behind this and know I'll be safe. This is a great spot to fight from, so I clear out everything that's immediately in the area, do a quick sweep, and I see that the tank is gone, so I don't need to worry about that as much. But I still want to go around the left side so that tower I have more cover from that tower while I approach it. We've still got a few enemies, or a few stragglers to clear out, so we're going to just use the laser cannon so we're not using resources. I see that flamethrower from the Hulk, so I want to make sure these striders are dead before I deal with them. Throw that stun grenade out, he gets stuck. And just a quick little bit of LASIK, he'll fall over real quick. He gets shot in the back by, I think that was a rocket devastator, but uh, anyway, just helped me out a little bit more. Took me a little off target, but that's okay. Uh, take out the rocket, or the heavy devastator, he goes flying for some reason. And then I hit the heavy plate on the front of the scout strider, and the grenade ricochets back and blows me up a little bit. But because I got blast armor, it doesn't really hurt that bad. And we only got one more rocket devastator to go before we can assault that tower. So we take him out. And now I'm looking at the tower. I'm trying to bait out its shot. So the shot comes in, dive out of the way, and I'm going to make a sprint for it, y'all. 
So here's a trick that you see that red light on the tower. As soon as that red light goes out, the tower can no longer shoot me. I'm past its angle of elevation and it can no longer target me. Now right here, I don't know why this Rocket Devastator took so many shots to kill. I think it's because I was hitting him in the arm and arms have different health pools than the actual unit. So I think that's why that took so many shots, but usually it should only take about five to take out a Rocket Devastator, even if you just shoot him in the chest with the uh, Jar 5 Dominator. But I'm just going to circle around this tower and kind of laser beam the crap out of it. It blows up, and now I can collect some resources. Having dealt with that major pain in the democracy, we're able to go back to the old artillery position, dial it in, and we're going to be able to leave the area knowing we have a little bit of extra fire support. And this is where I decide to go back up north. I want to be able to do that circle around like I talked about with the route. And since I just cleared out this entire area, it's pretty smooth sailing. I'm able to just sprint through the open without a care in the world until I run into this patrol out of nowhere. Thankfully, Jar 5 Dominator handles Berserkers relatively well. Uh, I can just duck behind a little bit more cover, reload, and I'm able to take them all out pretty easily. Now, I will say with the Jar 5, I personally like running it on burst fire mode because it reminds me of the bolter from a, a previous universe I used to operate in. And uh, having a fully automatic, rocket-propelled grenade launcher is just very appealing to me as a commissar. I will admit I am not the best with this weapon system yet. I do still need practice. But I am able to go down here, resupply up, kind of get ready to go tackle that fabricator complex because it looks like it's a big one. But we got another Hulk coming in. We'll deal with him real quick. And I hope you all can see, just if you've ever had problems with Hulks, this is the way to deal with them. Just stun grenades and either an AMR laser cannon or auto cannon. It just melts them so fast, makes them a complete non-issue. But I'm trying to pick off these heavy devastators with the Jar 5, but because I can't frickin' aim that well, I'm not having a lot of success and I catch a rocket in the face. This is one of two deaths in the run, and uh, honestly, I know that looks like bullshit, but I kind of deserve that. I've mentioned this in the past, but when the only thing the enemy can see is your head, you shouldn't be surprised when you catch a rocket to the dome. So when you're trying to do these kind of fights, don't poke your head up like I was doing there. Get out of this position, get behind the rock, and use it as hard cover. We always want to be having hard cover against the bots whenever possible just because of the rockets and the randomness of getting headshot with them. But if I'm behind hard cover, it's a lot easier for me to duck and dive behind it and, you know, avoid those rocket shots. Whereas if I'm in that kind of depressed position, it's, it's basically a crapshoot whether I get shot in the face or not. So I'm out of bullets and I have a grenade pistol as a secondary, so I'm just going to melee this guy to death while I reload. Uh, and I'm going to try to lose those enemies in the fog. I see this hell bomb and I'm like, oh, that's a good way to get them to stop chasing me. So I run a little bit away and then I realize, like, oh crap, I can't see the damn thing. So I move up, shoot it, and I'm going to keep running. That's going to kill anything that was quick enough to be chasing me. It's going to really help me lose that rest of that patrol or drop whatever it is in the fog. It also is going to give me enough time to call in a resupply and get prepared to take out this big-ass outpost. There's a few more enemies chasing me, and because I don't want them to be constantly following me, I'm going to take out anything that I can see in the fucking fog. I hate these visibility modifiers, y'all. Like, I don't mind them on occasion, but when I was recording this, every fucking planet had a visibility modifier, and it was just really frustrating. But with the laser cannon, we kind of light up the night, and we take out all those little guys. We get our resupply up, and we're going to go hit up that fabricator. As we approach, we're going to remain crouched and check our map. I need to take out that tower, and I need to know where all the enemies are so that I don't get overwhelmed while I'm kind of in the open here. The only bit of cover I have is the fabricator base itself, so I'm clearing out everything that might shoot at me from the sides or from behind before I move up to take out anything else that's in here. I see that laser cannon moving around, so I know I'm not going to be able to kill it just yet, but I also know I'm well within its angle of elevation, or well outside of it, so it won't be able to deal with me just yet. I try to take out these fabricators with the grenade pistol, and you can do it from long range, but it, it's pretty hard, y'all. Like, the getting the angle right just... It's tough. It's an explosive weapon, so you have to hit it at the bottom of the vents. And after a little bit of time, I kind of just get frustrated throwing an eagle at it. But you can see the laser cannon keeps doing work. There's a bunch of devastators coming, and I think that was a tank shot. So I'm looking at my stratagems, trying to figure out what I need to throw at it to make it go away. And since Orbital Strike is really good at dealing with tanks, I'm going to throw that. I don't think I have my eagles up. But I noticed the laser cannon turned back around, so I'm going to try to melt this thing off. It's going to give me a little bit more space to work with. If I need to, I can circle around the back, I can leave through where I came in, hit it from a different angle, 
But right now I've got the bots funneling in. I've got hard cover. So I'm not worried at all about taking damage or getting killed. And I know I can throw that eagle at that fabricator in relative safety before hopping out of here and going around the back to deal with the last couple of fabricators. I think there's like two left on these big ones. They usually have like five. Uh, I think we've dealt with three so far, so there should be two left. We're going around the back, clearing out the bunkers if there have any enemies in them. I don't see anybody up there. But I'm going to crouch. I'm looking, and I see that is a patrol that has just wandered in to this fabricator. It's got a hulk, it's got a couple of striders. So I run up, toss the eagle, they notice me, but I'm throwing stun grenades at them because I want eagle one to zero in and take out that whole patrol for me, which she does fantastically as always. As you can see with stun grenades, it's pretty reliable to make eagle airstrikes kill hulks and also just wipe out entire patrols, which is why I hardly ever run bots without stun grenades. Especially, I mean, if I'm running auto cannon or something, I can bring a different sidearm than the grenade pistol. But if I have the grenade pistol, I really don't need impact grenades, y'all, because I do have ways of killing fabricators, even if it's a little bit unreliable. The worst is when you're stuck with a loadout that cannot kill these without, you know, eagle or orbital support. But I see all these enemies coming in. I don't want to waste time trying to kill that fabricator with a grenade pistol. So I walk my way up through the barbed wire, and I'm going to try to take this thing out. I'm looking at my stratagems, and I finally realize that I do have the artillery that I cleared out earlier. So I toss that on there, and I'm going to use the grenade pistol and make an escape route for myself. I know that's the last fabricator, so as soon as that artillery goes off, we clear out the heavy outpost, and we can move on to the next command bunker, which as you'll notice, my 380 is off cooldown, so we're going to go chunk it at it. First, we're going to be picking off any of these machine gunners. These guys are deceptively dangerous, because if they catch you unawares, they can just cut you right in half. But now that they're dead, I can go up to the wall. I'm just checking to make sure I don't get shot because I don't want to drop this thing in the wrong spot. But now that I know it's clear, I'm just going to chunk the 380 in and I'm going to circle around the north side because, like I said, y'all, I know for a fact that that will kill it. I almost bleed to death here, but I managed to stem myself just in time. But because the 380 is so reliable at killing these things, it's really a fire and forget kind of weapon system. I just throw it in there and I'm going to circle around the long way. And I'm just kind of hanging out in the area just in case it doesn't kill it. I can go throw a precision, air, uh, precision, precision orbital at it or something like that. But since it does die, I just call in the resupply and I get ready to go take out this next mortar pit that's up here. Now that we've resupplied and our eagle's off cooldown, we can safely approach the mortar pit, toss in an eagle, and just kind of wait for eagle one to do her thing. I'm going to move away. I don't want to get shot. I don't want to take damage unnecessarily. I'm going to wait to see how much of this Eagle One kills. She manages to get the whole thing, so I can just swiftly move on. I make my way to the next objective after quickly checking to make sure that there's, you know, no samples or anything. I do see quite a few in here, so I'm going to grab them up. I do want to include these clips just so y'all that are diving at lower levels or, you know, you just lack solo play, but you can't quite handle hell dive yet. You'll know where the, where the samples are, and you can kind of go look for them. I want y'all to be able to progress. I want y'all to get better weapons, because better weapons means better tools of spread and manage democracy. But now that we're at the next objective, this is where we enter the kill four hulks in under a minute phase. I am going to die while I do this, but throw a quick stun grenade, take out this first guy. You know, quick laser beam to the eye, he's dead. I look over there, see a fabricator, throw an eagle at it, and I see another hulk coming, and unfortunately I just get shot in the face. I don't think that was really a preventable death. I don't think I really made an error there. That's just the luck of the draw. But as you can see on the screen there, that Hulk got exploded by Eagle One, so he's no longer an issue. Pick my laser cannon right back up, get my samples, and go on with my day. There's quite a few little bots here. Not a big deal for the Jar 5. I probably should have been using Jar 5 a little bit more often this run. I see another Hulk in the distance. This is Hulk number three. So we throw a stun grenade at him. I'm just going to laser beam him. When you see that blue light, that means you're not quite on target. When there's no light reflecting off, you're good. I see another Hulk, chuck another stun grenade, run up to him, start laser beaming him in the face. But this little bot distracts me for just long enough that this guy gets back up, is able to do a little bit of damage to me, and kind of causes this to be a little bit stickier than I would have liked. But I get another stun grenade off, take his eyeball out, and then I'm just going to kind of run away while I'm on fire. And I'm going to chunk an eagle at this fabricator and hide because I don't want to die and I really need that resupply because I'm obviously super low health with no stems. Throw eagle at it. We're going to duck behind this piece of cover. This is not hard cover, y'all, but since there's nothing big shooting at me right now, I think I'm safe. 
Uh, it also will provide a little bit of visibility block and a little bit of concealment like we talked about in the last video. Gives me a chance to resupply top of my health off and I see that there's still one fabricator left to destroy. I see it coming out of the vents over here and I know this is actually the perfect opportunity for the grenade pistol to actually kill a fucking fabricator. So I hop on top of the fence, shoot it straight down the vent, and I'm going to just run away. I don't need to kill those enemies, uh, just to save time. We are kind of low on the clock. So I hop off the side and I'm going to try to lose them in the fog while I move on to the next big command bunker. At this point, you all know the drill. We approach the command bunker quietly. We get in a good position. We look at where the enemies are. Make sure we're behind hard cover. I get a good visual on it so I know where to throw the 380. And I'm just going to chunk it over the wall here. I'm also going to throw in an orbital just to make sure it's dead. I probably didn't need to do that, but I mean the orbital precision strike is on such a low cooldown. I don't think it's really going to matter. And I'm just going to kind of hang out until I get confirmation that this bunker is dead. But I am going to move a little bit away and I'm going to start circling around the edge just like I did with the last one. Y'all have seen this before. But I'm watching the 380. I'm just waiting for that confirmation that the command bunker is dead. But this is going to lead to the next command bunker where I'm not going to have a 380. So we're going to have to deal with it without. While I'm circling around here, I'm making sure I'm behind some hard cover. I'm constantly checking my radar for enemies. But as soon as I see that it's destroyed, I'm going to move on to the last command bunker. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the 380 for this one, and I don't have enough time to wait for it. So I'm going to sneak up like I do uh, against all the other ones, take out the perimeter guard, and find a good spot to chunk ordnance at it until it's no longer a problem. We have artillery, we've got Eagle 1, and we've got an orbital air strike, or an orbital precision strike, so it should die after sufficient explosive power has hit it. Now, I'm not sure if the Eagle air strikes alone can kill these things. I don't think that they can, but I know that they do damage them, and they will take the turrets off of it. And those turrets hit harder than probably anything else that the bots have. I don't know. They will one-shot you like a cannon, but they shoot with the same rate of fire as like a regular Devastator. But as you can see, like with the other places, I found a nice solid wall to hide behind. So even if they drop like an entire army of bots over there, I'm not worried at all because I'm completely safe. I'm constantly checking my sides just to make sure there's no patrols sneaking up on me. While I wait for Eagle One to do her thing and just keep throwing ordnance at this stupid bunker until it finally blows up. I eventually remember that I have the artillery that I cleared out earlier. I don't know why, y'all. I'm just bad at this game. I constantly forget that I have those, but... I do eventually remember, land it right on top of the sucker, and I'm just waiting for it to come in, and I'm going to take out these couple of berserkers while it takes it out. Jar 5 is probably one of the best weapons in the game at dealing with berserkers. I think it's just quick four shots to them will take them out most of the time. It's even fewer if you can hit them in the weak point, but with those suckers, it's pretty hard to aim at them. Now I'm going to head towards the extract, but I'm keeping my eyes peeled for any optional objectives I might have missed. And off in the distance there, I see a radar tower. So if I want my outstanding patriotism, and you know that I do, I need to go deal with that. I also happen to run into the super sample rock, so I'm going to go collect them for Super Earth. I don't need these anymore, but I know y'all like to see it, and Super Earth needs them, so I'm going to pick them up because I'm not a selfish hell diver. But then I make my way to the artillery installation, and I see a fabricator on the other side of it. So my plan here is I'm going to get the, art, or the radar station started, I'm going to get it moving up the pole, and then I'm going to go throw an eagle at that, which I have one eagle remaining. This is going to put my eagle on cooldown, so I have the full three eagles available for the extraction. Extraction nowadays is one of the hard, not one of the, it is undoubtedly the most difficult part of Solo and Helldive, because we're getting the full brunt of the automaton forces against just us. Normally this would only work against like a full team of four Helldivers. You'd, you're supposed to be getting this amount of enemies. For some reason the game is a little bit bugged right now. And even as a solo you get the full force of the automatons on the extract. Like uh, I think it also applies throughout the game. But it's especially noticeable when you're extracting. So I want to make sure that I have all of my tools available. That means I want to have my full eagles up. All three of them. I want to have my orbital ready. And I want to have my 380 ready to go as well. I also want to make sure that all my weapons are reloaded and I'm in a good position so that I can fight the incoming horde of bots and remind them what freedom thinks of their stupid communist ideas. But now that we've dealt with the radar station, let's go to the extract and get ready for a fight. Here we are at extraction and thankfully it's one of these where I can fight up a hill. I really like this extract in particular because I get two solid walls of cover and there's only really two ways or one way that the bots can come up to get to me. This means the stun grenades and Eagle One are going to be doing a whole lot of work. 
But more importantly, when it comes to extracting on solo Helldive, you need to be proactive. These patrols are going to spawn in like crazy. I've had instances where I've had well over a hundred enemies on the screen at once, and probably half of them were Devastators. And if you get here too late, or you don't have stratagem support, you're just, your goose is cooked. There is no way you're going to be able to fight through all of these bots with just the weapons on your back. You really need that eagle support or that orbital support in order to handle all of these stupid communists as we wait to hitch a ride on Pelican 1. So I'm trying to manage my ammo well by using my laser cannon to just deal with any of these bots that are coming up. I'm behind a bit of soft cover. This will stop any kind of laser shots, but a rocket will take it out. So I'm able to reload my laser cannon, which I didn't need to do, but I thought I might need it like right away. I see that bot drop drop right uh, near me, and there's a tank on the cliff. I mean, that is an interesting position. That is going to cause me a little bit of a headache. But as you see, that patrol handled completely by Eagle One. She just take, took the whole thing out, one go, no problem, no fuss. And I am going to try to take this tank out with the orbital precision strike, but I threw it a little bit short because I don't know why. I'm just used to tanks being able to move towards me, which they usually do, unless they're stuck on a fucking cliff. But he's going to be up there for a little while. I try a few different things to get rid of him because I can't have a tank like in the one spot that is actually dangerous to me. So I tried to take out his track with the laser cannon. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do this. So after a little while of trying to burn that track to pieces, I get shot and I'm like, all right, you stupid fucker here. Take my last eagle. I'm going to make sure that sucker lands right on top of your head. And I'm just going to give him a nice little hug goodbye because this bot is really pissing me off. He took up two of my stratagem slots and made me focus on his dumb ass for far too long. So we disrespect him a little bit, but thankfully, I think that that burning corpse on top of the hill gave the bots enough to think about to not bum rush me while I was having all my strategy going cool down. I still have my 380 up, but since Pelican 1's coming in, I'm just throwing stun grenades. I take out that Hulk because he might be a little bit dangerous. They're a little bit fast. Throw my last stun grenade, and I'm just going to run up, get on Pelican 1, and get the fuck out of here. Well, y'all, that's been the run. I hope you learned a little bit about how routes work, how to avoid patrols, how to come up on objectives and do them discreetly while still avoiding a full stealth playthrough. As you can see, I don't stealth through these runs, I fight through them. But it's still smart to occasionally fight with a strategical mind. Now, I still got a lot of loadouts in the pipeline here that I'm excited to bring to y'all. So if you've enjoyed it and you made it all the way to the end of the video, first off, I just want to say thank you sincerely. I am so happy that people are enjoying the content. And in the future, we're going to be doing one more loadout for the bots before we move on to team play. I, solo is not the only way to play this game, and I want to show you all how to be a good teammate. So if that sounds good to you, subscribe and tune in for more. Until next time, Commissar Kai, signing out.